previously at the PBR World Finals. Night one of the PBR World Finals starts right now. If you are not excited about night number one of the PBR World Finals right here in Las Vegas, do me a favor, stop everything you're doing and check your polls. Welcome, Sage Kimsey. Go ahead. Or rather, Sage Kimsey says, welcome to my world. The guy can flat out ride. We get our first chance to really see whether the decision to come back was the right one. There is the world's first answer. Whenever people think he can't, that's when he's at his best. Will Pacheco get the ball rolling? It will not be Kaiki's night. A Parasito with a lot of work, and then he is forced to run away. You talk about a slugfest. Cooper Davis is ready for one. Cole Baba brings his can-do attitude to the World Finals. Jess Lockwood gets it done. His first qualified ride at the World Finals. He could be 90 right here. Jess Lockwood wins round number one, the seventh round he has won this season. But none of those other rounds have equaled this many points. Lockwood, Davis, Cole Baba, those guys were all really good tonight. T-Mobile Arena turned on the excitement in round one, and we should expect more of the same tonight as the baddest bulls in the business come out to play. The top ten shifted last night, and with 3,000 points still available, expect the shuffling to continue. With his round win, Jess Lockwood moves up to third. Now only 277 and a half points behind his good friend and world number one, Derek Kobaba. Hello once again, everyone, alongside nine-time world champion Ty Murray, as well as my other partner in the booth, two-time PBR world champion Justin McBride. I'm Craig Hummer. Ty, Jess Lockwood has been telling us all this is a new year, that he's going to be a brand new rider at this year's world finals, and he proved it right out of the gate. Craig, this, this young guy is so impressive. It doesn't matter what test we throw at him, he passes it. If he doesn't pass it the first time, he passes it the second time. This is him last Last night, this looks flawless. You're talking about a guy that isn't very far out of high school. You have to remember that. He's so young, but he's so hungry for it. He's in contention for a world championship, and it's not by accident. He's been working at this for 20 years. And it wasn't amongst the world's elite whether or not they would ride. But as I turn to you, Justin, we wanted to see how they would react. Well, guess what? Derek Kolbaba stayed calm, cool, and collected, and then converted and kept that world number one right Yeah, and I think if there were those questions coming in, how Derek Kolbaba would handle coming into the World Finals as the number one guy, he answered all those questions in round one. Into his hand, Kolbaba looked really good. And here's the thing, I think Kolbaba has got to be at his best to win the World Championship this year. And as long as he keeps taking it one bowl at a time, doesn't get caught up in worrying about Sunday, but he's worried about Friday or Thursday or whatever day it is when he's competing, I think this guy's got what it takes. Well, whether it's Kolbaba, Lockwood, Cooper Davis, the defending PBR World Champ, when we see him in the locker room, they are smooth. Just Lockwood standing by with Leah Garcia. Walking by, actually, we're in the middle of the intros for the arena, Jess. How many goosebumps do you still get when you have this excitement? You're 20 years old, you've been watching this your whole life. Yeah, this is the biggest stage of bull ride, and it doesn't get any better. Uh, if you don't got goosebumps, you better go to the hospital and get your heart rate checked. He's about ready to walk through the pyro, Craig, as he comes down the stairs and gets ready to take his introduction. the arena right now we apologize for the audio issues but it is loud in here and that's because we're having so much fun the top guys in the world getting introduced to the crowd night number two well underway and nobody throws a party like las vegas tonight it is 
Remember, it's not just about the riders. There's a world champion bucking bull title to give away on Sunday in our Yeti world champion bucking bull standings led by Pearl Harbor and Sweet Pros Bruiser. They really have been a cut above all season. And by Sunday, we expect it to come down to those two. It's time to bring in our Iron Man, J.W. Hart and J.Dub. Over the past couple seasons, we've seen big fluctuations, it seems, over some of the top bulls having performed at different times and at different levels. What are you expecting to see from Pearl Harbor and Sweet Pros Bruiser? I'll tell you what, Craig, I'm back here right now with uh, the PRCA, newly crowned champion bucking bull. I think he can, uh, can he do Kate, what he did last year? It's going to be good watching. I, knew, I know both guys say both bulls are here 100% ready and healthy. Well, and all the bulls are going to have to listen, along with the riders, to our national anthem. Let's listen in. stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the This crowd is ready. We are moments away from bucking. PBR Built Ford Tough Series World Finals on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the new 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. By Las Vegas, proud host of the 2017 PBR Built Ford Tough World Finals. And by B&W Trailer Hitches, makers of the number one selling gooseneck hitch in America and the official hitch of the PBR. My partners have called them spoilers, but in their minds, this week is right for the taking. Ty Sage Kimsey came here to ride. Yeah, this bull turns back into his hand, and the minute he puts on his blinker, Sage opens up with that outside leg. That's how you show off. And Mac, J.B. Mooney loves when people question him. Yeah, this guy doesn't even really have the use of his free arm, but when you're as good as J.B. Mooney, you don't need a free arm. <laughs> We had 13 qualified rides in round number one. Jess Lockwood was the best going over 90. Fabian Vieira slots into second. A tie for third between Derek Kolbaba and the Canadian Dakota Butter. Our through tubing sky cam bringing you into the shoots and standing in the wings along with three-time PBR world champion Sage Kimsey. Let's send it to Leah. Thank you, Craig. Well, Sage did set the stage last night. We're talking about you in the PRCA versus the PBR. How do you compare the two? Oh, uh, there's there's really no comparison. You know, it's bull riding, but it really is apples and oranges. I mean, you know, it's a lifestyle choice, really. Um, you know, there's great bulls both places, and uh, this has been a really fun event. I've just been getting to kind of kick back because there's really no pressure at all. So, you know, I'm not in a chase for a world title or anything. So I've just been getting to kick back and just really enjoy a good bull riding. I asked the same question to J.W. Harris a while back. Anything to prove here? No, not at all. I mean, you know, you look at my stats, it, they all say it all. You know, I've got one of the highest riding percentages. I've rode Pearl Harbor. I've rode, you know, five bulls that are out tonight in the rank pen from the time I was 18 to now. So I don't really have anything to prove. I, I'll let my riding do the talking. Well said. Let's check in now with Shorty Gorman so we can get this event started. Absolutely, Leah. Don't think round two is any less exciting than round number one. And i tell you why I'm excited about it. It's because round number one went exactly like I wanted it to, with the exception of Eduardo Parasitu 
coming down early, but the rest of the guys in the world title race answered the call. I expect them to do it again tonight, but we're going to see a step up in the bull power. We got the world champion bull contenders. We got the rank pin out. I think it's very important. If you want to win that world title, you got to ride your bulls tonight and Sunday. You are right, Shorty Gorham. You better ride them all this week if you want to win our Machinery Auctioneers Section 1 lineup. Starts with Shane Proctor himself, a former PRCA World Champ. Dakota Butter, who we've already mentioned, had a great round one. We'll also check in with Stetson Lawrence, who rode in round one as well. And we'll end it with the Brazilian, Marco Aguche, himself, a man who made eight seconds 24 hours ago. J.W. Hart, this first pairing, Shane Proctor versus a bull you know a lot about, Canadian Mist. Yes, sir, this is a good matchup. I, you know, we hadn't had this bull a whole long time, but uh, the two times that we've really seen him do well against uh, J.R. Vieira, bull was outstanding, really gets steep, a lot of kick right here in the gate to the left. Can go back to the right, though. Proctor came close, Ty Murray, in round one. 7.61 was the official time because of a touch. Yeah, you know, the thing you got to remember about round two is, is this is when the, it, you separate the men from the boys. It, when you come walking down that hallway to put your rope on them tonight, the hair on the back of your neck standing up because the ones we're going to see here breathe fire. <laughs> and Matt, not only a deal breaker, so to speak, for a lot of these guys, but it could turn out to be a weak breaker in terms of the bull that they face tonight. Yeah, and going to, to the point of how ranked these bulls are, you can't let that affect your mental game, though. You got to show up knowing that you can ride these bulls. You got to know that your mechanics fit any kind of bull. And as long as the guys approach it like that and don't talk themselves out of it, they got a chance against a lot of them. Well, and I think a lot of our fans know we get to spend time with all these riders before each event in the locker room, not only talking to them, but really studying them. And I think both of you would agree. Our top guys all have the attitude that they can ride anything. Canadian Mist makes Proctor look like he was riding through the fog. Not even close. Proctor down much quicker than in round one. This one ends at two and a half seconds. You know, you always hear me talk about your feet are, are going to be what buy you a second chance when you lose your balance. Well, here he loses his balance. Both feet click back up here behind him. You know, that's where turning those toes out and letting those spurs work for you really comes in handy. Canadian miss had a lot to do with that, too. That bull was steep Ooh. right there. Look at that. I mean, you just, you can't kick more straight up than that. And then a little present for Shane Proctor after he was already on the dirt. And keep in mind, Shane Proctor is one of those riders that not only competes on the PR, the PBR tour, but also then tries to mix in as many rodeos as he can. And so this is a guy that gets on a lot of bulls throughout the season, and those bumps and bruises start to last a little bit longer at this time of year. We move on now to a guy who's got a chance to move a full bull ahead of everybody. Canadian, Dakota Butter on a Canadian bull, Stuntman Ray. Let's go back a day ago to Nailed. Yeah, and this was a bull that originally came from, uh, from Canada. Dakota Butter knows these bulls. He knows the bull he's got again tonight. And I tell you, man, I love this guy right here. I love the effort that he puts out each and every time. And for Butter, if he keeps his back straight, he's got another great chance to put up big numbers right here. That was actually his re-ride opportunity from round number one. He tied for third with 87 and three quarters. Ty, this guy has now ridden six of his last seven. Great time to be getting hot. Oh man, you know, that confidence is the biggest thing in this sport. And if you don't, if you're not coming by it naturally, you gotta fabricate it somehow. He's just gotta, he's just gotta ride that wave of confidence right now. Keep carrying it through. You still gotta take it one bull at a time. And remember, you've got one down and five to go. Whoa, Stuntman Ray making Dakota Butter wish he might have a stunt double. Shorty, that's a lot of action from that bull. Absolutely, that bull reared up, kind of pinned him in the back there. That's one thing, you know, you can't forget how dangerous these bucket shoots are. That's that's one of the most dangerous places in this arena. Uh, did a good job of getting out of there. The guys helped him out. I think we're going to roll, let him kind of recoup, and then come back to him when we get a chance. 
We're going to move on. Next rider on the list, Stetson Lawrence. And what a matchup this is, Justin McBride. Stetson Lawrence, with the right groin injury, goes up against one of the more difficult bulls we've ever seen in the form of seven deaths. Yeah, this is a really, really tough, intimidating bull. One of the meaner bulls we're going to see out tonight. And he doesn't put up the huge scores like Pearl Harbor and Bruiser, but I think he's every bit as tough to get by, Ty. Yeah, and you know that's the thing. You gotta, you know, you've gotta have that in your mind when you come to round two at the PBR finals. You can't, you know, you can't be just having that attitude of oh, I got a hard one to get by. You just, you've got to go at them just like it's any other bull, and that's what Stetson really did last night. Seven dust shows Lawrence the door. And then it takes all four bullfighters to keep him engaged. Seven Dust wants to play. You know, Stetson tore his groin last night to the point that now it's just the, the muscle is rolled up uh, into a ball. And, and I can tell you that out of the injuries that you can get by in bull riding, your groin is not one of them. That is a muscle that has to be used every single time. That's very sore. That's going to play a big part and how Stetson does here this week. Seven dust score, 44 and a quarter. So that gets logged as his first of two outs here at the World Finals, which will complete his year of work. Remember, in the World Champion Bucking Bull Race, you take your eight best scores from the regular season, and that average moves you into your final two scores from the World Finals. And on Sunday, we will know our World Champion Bucking Bull, as well as, of course, our World Champion Rider. Guys, let's talk about JW. Harris, we were visiting with Sage Kimsey a moment ago. He's got three PRCA World titles. Ty, J.W. Harris has four of those World Championships. That's right. You know, this is another tough, gutsy guy that that is going to need to be tough and gutsy right here. He's on a he's on a big, strong bull. It's going to be a round to the right. This is one that the guys don't don't like. He's he's going to jerk on you and try you in every way. Surprising. Surprisingly, Mac, Beaver Creek Bow has had a little bit of a resurgence this year. He's been out 11 times, only ridden once. Yeah, and, and he gets the job done each and every time. Talked about, Ty talked about him being strong around to the right. What makes him so strong is that he has a lot of forward movement and a lot of front end to him. And if you miss it one time, game over. And it's going to be really tough for J.W. Harris going into his hand right here. J.W.'s right hand down, bull goes to the right. Your instinct is to come up and over your head and get a little bit further back into your hand. You cannot do that against this bull. J.W. Harris gets to throw the hat and ascend to the rafters. He conquers Beaver Creek Bow, and actually that's the second time in a row that Beaver Creek Bow has been ridden. This time it's worth 87 and a half for the 31-year-old. Well, Justin called it, and that's exactly what he does. Look at how he's really reaching to that front end. He's just, you know, every time this bull jumps, he almost starts to get off into the middle, into the inside of that spin. Watch right here if you pause it. Look how far up he is. Let's roll on through to the jump and watch him just dive out over those shoulders. That's what took all the power away from that bull. Let's send it down to Leah. Did you feel like you were climbing up a hill that whole time? Yeah, and you know, whenever I seen the draw, I was excited. Uh, I like them bulls with a lot of front end and big and heavy, and I knew what I had to do. I just had to go out there and do it. Great ride. Thanks. Shades of 2014 when he won the Rookie of the Year title on the last ride aboard Honey Hush for 93 and change. This is Dakota Butter, once again still sitting atop the Canadian Bull, Stuntman Ray. Yeah, and, and we talked about, I think there's something for this for Dakota. When he has one of these bulls from Canada that he knows about, I think it gives him a little extra confidence. And for this guy, that's huge. I mentioned he'd ridden six of his last seven. Not only ready for this week, but certainly when he's part of the Canadian team at the Global Cup next week in Edmonton. You know, you've already seen how this bull can get really, really bad in there. This is where you're trying to walk that fine line of getting up there where you need to be. 
and not pushing this bull too much to where he wants to throw a fit in there again. J-Dub, I can see you running the neck rope right there. What the... Uh, is he leaning up on against the back? Well, he's leaning against the back of the shoot because he's having a real hard time getting his right leg down. If he can get it down, I believe he's going to try to go pretty soon. Butter trying to move Stuntman Ray into position. There's the knot. Oh, Dakota Butter needed eight seconds. He comes up eight one hundred short. He'll challenge. They're gonna make you pay for that, Dakota. It looks like you broke the button, but <laughs> it could be well it, it worth it. It could be though. well worth it. Is right if he can eke out eight one hundreds. Time. Justin, watch how this bull just changes up the timing. I thought Dakota couldn't have been in a better position. This bull's really steep when he comes around. Dakota's, you know, meeting that jump, moving around there to the right, and then watch right there at that little bit of stumble just changed all of the momentum. Just broke it up just enough that threw his counter movement off. Man, that was the one that got away. And remember, if he loses his rope, which from that angle and the clock time looks like it's clearly going to be no score. And it is. It's confirmed. 7.77. But this was the first reminder of Metany this evening with tomorrow's round being drafted. These guys will get to pick in order of how they finish in this round, which is why a good score or a buck off close to eight will get you a pretty good pick. Only one rider on the board, J.W. Harris, who has a message for Beaver, for Beaver Creek Bo. Not on my watch. Well, Pearl Harbor, he's getting ready as his the Titan who he will face eventually to try to win the world champion bucking bull title, Bruiser. We've got Ali Frazier, Manning Brady, Curry, and LeBron James all rolled up into one. Tomorrow night at 6 Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you college football action as the two remaining undefeated teams in Conference USA fight to keep their perfect records alive when Lane Kiffin's Florida Atlantic Owls host Marshall right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Another shot from our through tubing sky cam bringing you inside the action. This crowd being entertained at the moment by Flint Rasmussen, our entertainer. And we get a chance to check in with Shorty Gorham once again. Shorty, what do you think of our next rider, Matt Triplett, going up against Bad Beagle? Well, this is the bull of Jared Allen. I know Matt Sharping that takes care of Bad Beagle. He's been really high on this bull for a long time. And I thought the bull was just kind of a nice spinner around to the left. Uh, but he does follow it up a little bit more with his hind end, which wants those guys back into the outside. I will say this, though. The bull has changed in the last probably two months. This bull has really brought on his A game. He's got to really have a little bit more air drop and kick. This bull stepping it up. Matt Triplett can ride him. I think Matt's a very, very talented guy, but you've heard us talk about it before. If Matt can just shut his mind off, he rides with great balance. If he can just let his body do the work that it knows what to do, I think he's got a chance. Triplett's got that torn labrum in his left shoulder. That is his free arm. He's already got surgery scheduled for right after the finals. And if you want to talk about rides on this bull, Mac, there's only been one guy do it on the Built Ford Tough Series. That's defending Peter, our world champ, Cooper Davis, all the way back last season in Oklahoma City. Yeah, and I'm with Shorty here. I've, I've watched this bull a lot of times. I think, man, this looks like the pick of out of all of them, the guys should all ride him, but they don't because there is more than meets the eye with this bull. Shorty talked about the whip he's got. He's got a pretty wicked corner. He's really strong around it. But Triplett has all the ability in the world to be able to ride this bull. As, as tough as this bull is and as many buck offs as he's provided, I still think that he is one of the best draws in this round of bulls. Matt Triplett only made it to four and a half seconds last night on Twinkle Toes. Let's see if he can take a bite out of Bad Beagle. There's the nine. Bad Beagle makes triplet taste the dirt. This one doesn't even go half the required time. 
and Ty, Matt's such a talented guy. I, I think he should ride this bull each and every time, but you watch as he starts getting around the corners here, he just stays back and tries to cut the bull off every time. You cannot, especially away from your hand, miss a front end, and let alone in the short right, or in the late pin of bulls. You Absolute, cannot miss it. Absolutely. You know, that's something that's going to work on a nice bull. You, you, you can't cut off these rank ones. Hey, J Dub, don't think we didn't notice that initially Bad Beagle didn't want you there. Yeah, just, he's, <laughs> he's sitting on pins and needles. This guy is ready to go. I bet you see him in the championship round. Well, another good out from a pen where you expect the Bulls to not only be busy, but to impress all night long. You have to figure that Matt Sharping and Jared Allen are happy with Bad Beagle's performance. We move on to Cody Nance, who in this round, Ty Murray, has matched up with Roman. Yeah, this Bull's probably gonna start to the left and go back to the right before it's all said and done. You know, as I always say with Cody Nance, I'm a big fan of his because of his guts, his grit, and his try. And the, the only thing that ever gets in his way is Cody Nance. When he tries to get too clever or think about it too much or try some new kind of gimmick with a spur or a rope or a the way his handle is or, or something like that, if you give this guy a flat braided rope and just any old pair of roping spurs, that's when he's at his best because when he just trusts his body to do what it knows how to do, and rely on how much grit he has, that's what makes him unstoppable. Those are his, his two biggest strengths. Cody Nance makes it to eight, and for only the second time tonight, we see a rider who will get a score. And it's close, but Ty talked about his effort, man. They're going to look at it, make sure he made it on time, but that was good stuff. I want you to watch his feet in the middle of this ride. He clicks his heels clear up to the top of this bull's back and is able to get him back down. You know, that's what I'm saying about it. He did it already there. His left foot came way back. Watch here in a minute. About right at the, there they come up, it gets him back down. He just really keeps moving. And, you know, that's, look at this. Look at these feet come clear back onto the bull's back as the bull kicks. He gets his feet oh. back down in front of him like a bronc rider. He's got a hold of his rope. That's going to be a score. They are taking a look at time, but from that first angle, Ty, it looked like he was going to get a score, and now it is look, official. 86. Look at his foot right here. Yeah, I mean, it's clear on top of this bull's back. Now watch as this bull breaks and kick. Look at that. Gets him right back down. That's how you work your feet. He's with Leah. Hey, what were you doing with your feet during that ride? Great stuff. I uh, just riding my bike. <laughs> Pedaling, apparently. Simple as that. They say it's like riding a bike, you know, stay loose and just moving my feet. Do what I had to do. I rode about the last three jumps with my tail, so I wasn't sure what I had. <laughs> Craig. Cody Nance on the board with his first qualified ride of the week. Last year, he was able to get two under his belt. As we move on to Mason Lowe, a man who is also, as we mentioned last night, dealing with a series of injuries, the most important and the one that gives him the most trouble, an elbow injury on his riding arm, Mac. That's the right arm that he has plans for surgery as well. And he he would need a healthy elbow against Gangster's Wild Side. Absolutely, because J.W. Hart, Gangster's Wild Side is not going to do him any favors. He's not going to do any favors, Justin. And he could, he's got to be careful in here because this bull will brad him in the front of that bucket shoot as he did chase outlaw here last year you got to be real itchy and twitchy with him and get out of there as fast as you can this bull's gonna have a lot of hop skip and either way with a lot of gas behind the gears he's gonna grind on them. you can see this guy right here he's got a he's got a flank rope under that bull's neck just kind of massaging back and forth he's just trying to give that bull something to think about besides throwing a fit in that bucket shoot just trying to cause a little bit of a distraction this bull is a perfect 14-0 in his career, and Dub, I'm glad you mentioned that out with Outlaw at last year's World Finals. That was in round three. He also took care of Cooper Davis in the championship round, Mac, and that only lasted 2.7. Yeah, rough Cooper Davis up pretty good. Broke some ribs there. I mean, this this bull is a little ticking time, Bob. You can tell, you know, we've been watching and talking about it. He's nervous in here, but when the gate opens, this bull explodes. 
been out five times this season, the last of which was Chase Outlaw when we were in Austin, Texas in the championship round. That lasted six and a half. Mason Lowe is dispatched 2.70. That little guy doesn't wait on you. No, that, that's the thing. It, it, you know, we talked about it at the finals. When you come in here injured and you're going to have to be tasked with five, possibly six of these caliber of bulls, it is tough. And man, when you're behind, especially in the rank pin, you get behind, there is no catching up. You have got to lead with them. Do you guys remember Mason Lowe last year? We took a couple shots after round four when he was sitting in the sports medicine room with ice pretty much on his whole body, and then he basically wasn't able to ride in round five. Yeah, he's a, he's a talented, tough guy, but sometimes you're just too beat up to be able to really compete. Brazilian Marco Aguche, twice second this season, New York City, that first major of the year, and then also Last Cowboy standing, the third major of the year. He's got five event wins throughout his career that started in Chicago back in 2011. He placed 11th in round number one, riding in like Flynn for 81 and three quarters. Here he faced, faces, excuse me, heartbreak kick. Ty, that went fast. Well, you talk about a setup. Watch this bull look to the right and then and then come with all he's got to the left. And, you know, that's just a smart bull that knows how to set his play up. Look at the look at the amount of just kick and drop that he has and the way he times it. Very athletic bull. That was a great bull right there. Two qualified rides so far in the round. The Bad Boy Moore lead dog, J.W. Harris, 87 and a half, the standard. That's tonight's master moment. Mike Lee, the first man to win the world finals and world championship titles in the same year. We're going to get to see him lead off our Machinery Auctioneers Section 2 lineup. You can see Emilio Hacende highlighting Sweet Pro's Bruiser right there because not only will we get to see Bruiser coming up, but also Pearl Harbor very, very soon. Let's take a look at our event standings. Remember, we are only in round number two. 3,000 points still available. For the guy who has the best cumulative ride score after six rounds, that's a 1,500-point bonus. This is going to go all the way down to Sunday, gang. We know that. It will go to the championship round before we'll be able to find out who our world champion is going to be. Mike Lee was that champion, Justin McBride, all the way back in 2004. Do you remember watching him as a kid? Absolutely, I remember watching that ride specifically. That was on the great bull, Mossy Oak Mudslinger, who was just uh, put into the brand of honor earlier this week. That was a great bull. Mike Lee, that was a huge deal, man. I mean. He come from a little bit off of the pace and ended up passing. He kicked my butt, Adriano Moraes, Mike Wyatt. There was a bunch of guys in there, and he just stomped <laughs> us all down. Just a kid, too, at the time. Yeah, I wasn't sure when we showed that master moment, Ty, if that was a film effect or that's just the way TV looked back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> that was back when the uh, shoots were made of wood and the men were made of steel. <laughs> Let's talk about this matchup. Mike Lee, only one of two men with more than 500 qualified rides. Well, at least at this point, J.B. Mooney coming up later in the program has a chance to make number 500 happen. But Mike Lee comes into this evening with 524 career qualified rides, all of them on the Built Ford Tough Series. Here he faces American Pride. Yeah, this fool's gonna be right there to the left. And this first jump and first turn back, he's really steep and really strong. And in typical Mike Lee fashion, Justin McBride, he doesn't get too concerned in the shoot. No, he's really laid back. He knows what he's doing in the shoot, but keep an eye out for Mike Lee. Something that's been happening the last four or five times that I've seen him out is he's been getting his right foot caught in his bull rope a lot, and, and it's been really dangerous. Like his hand come out of his rope, and the only thing holding him on to him would be his spur. Well, and the judges are going to be looking for that because it's illegal to leave the shoot 
with your spurs catching any loops in your rope. And that's an easy thing to avoid. Mike Lee knows how to set his rope where his, where his spurs aren't getting in his loops. And, and when you see it happen a couple times in a row, it starts to make you think it's not happening on accident. J.W., you're multitasking again. That's just what I do, Homer. <laughs> <laughs> Give American Pride a lot of credit. He kept trying to get Lee off to one side or the other, and once he finally did, he sealed the deal. That bull was nasty, man. <laughs> Nothing good about or smooth about this one, just back and forth, a lot of forward. Mike didn't have his rope tonight, man. He's rocking and rolling, trying to catch up to him. You know, this bull's changing strides every single jump, Justin, and I mean, that just adds to the roll. It, there's dressage horses that can't change leads that good. Alex Marsilio, 29-year-old Brazilian, first was on tour here at the finals in 2013. Hey, hey. Big Benny sends him flying across the arena. 3.12 is all that lasts, and Curtis Mendel's bull, well, he showed up. Every time, too, that bull. I love Big Benny. That bull is great. Each and every, look how far he launches him out across yeah, the arena. Yeah, I think in this shot, he, he leaves the screen. I mean, he just disappears, and what a, what a big, strong bull. Look at that when that hip catches him. Completely out of the shot. The definition of launched. Marsilio now 0 for 2. And we move on to a guy who was in the running to win the real-time Velocity Tour season for most of the year. Came up a little short last weekend at South Point during those finals. But Skeeter Kingsolver, who was three seconds last night in round number one on high test, Shorty gets another opportunity on Indian Medicine. Indian Medicine, this is a good bull right here. You know, in the rank pin, he's a good bull to have. A Julio Moreno, probably going to be right around here to the left. Skeeter's got to, he's got to bring his A game. You know, that's the whole thing. You heard me be pretty harsh on him last night, and that's for good reason. He's got to dig down deep, and he's got to put out some effort if he wants to get things done here, and I hope he does. Skeeter King Solver made the world finals each of his first three years on tour, but had that left shoulder surgery at the end of 2011 has not been back to the world finals since 2010 and as shorty emphasized this is a very different game at this level and skeeter knows that skeeter will admit to himself that he's working his way back this would be a big step he's in medicine he's got a great bull to get things turned around on right here. I've seen Cooper Davis ride this bull at the end of the regular season. Really snappy, it'll be either direction. Really a cool little bull right here. This bull likes to fake to the left and go to the right at times. Well, the bull bucked off Jess Lockwood at South Point a few days ago, and here he makes quicker work of Skeeter King Solver. He goes only two and change in this round. Well, Skeeter's confidence is way down, and you know, if you'll keep his, your, your eye on his head, that tells the whole story. As soon as this bull looks to the right, Skeeter gets to that point, and he says, nope, there ain't no way this is going any further. He's, he's preparing to dismount here because he knows he's off, and that's the reason his riding percentage is at 10%. You know, if you're wanting to get your confidence built back up, the World Finals in the rank pin isn't the place to do it. Next rider is in fact the sonic rider to watch. That's Brazilian Jose Vitor Lemmy. A ride in round number one, Justin McBride aboard Opus. Hey, he looked really, really good on Opus. I think the guy's got a lot of ability, and he's going to need every <laughs> bit of it to get by the bull he's got. Slinger Jr., this is the bull that we've seen cost uh, Kaiki Pacheco the world championship a year ago right here in Vegas. 25 straight buck offs for the bull. But Slinger Jr. just ran into a red hot Lemmy. That was good. Oh, man, 
You guys might want to insert this young man in the spoiler category. Hey, that's what I was talking about, not talking yourself out of it when you get here. He knows this. I mean, he knows that this bull's buck Taiki off all these things. He doesn't care, Ty. He just goes ahead and rides him. No, each jump, he's just doing whatever it takes to stay on, and that's what I love to see. You see a very talented guy that is confident in his movement. You don't see him waiting for something to happen. Every time that bull's doing something, he's doing something. That's what counter movement is. 86 and a half, he actually has two scores on the board. Now standing by with Leah and translator Paulo Krimber. Victor, you worked so hard to get to America. How is it being at this event? Eu me sinto realizado. Só de estar aqui já é a realização de um sonho. E eu vou procurar aproveitar muito bem as oportunidades que eu tiver. It's a dream come true for me. I'm just going to take every chance I can get to make that worth it. Thank you, Craig. Only 21 years of age, a young man that played professional soccer before deciding to take on the world's best bulls. He's second in the round, but your overall leader here in Las Vegas. Make sure to get out to your nearest Sonic location and try Sonic's new Car Hop Classic, now featuring a foot-long Tony. It is time for our Titans to tussle. Let's show you the head-to-head -head tail of the tape between Pearl Harbor and Sweet Pro's Bruiser. And you look at that average score, Ty Murray, nothing separating them. Boy, these are two of the most athletic bulls that I've ever seen. And you know, they, they really are two different bulls. The thing of it is with Bruiser, if you're on your game and, and your moves are right, which, I mean, it's that way with about any bull you get on, but you should ride this bull if you're a very, very top guy and you don't miss a beat. Yeah, I, and I, all the guys love this bull, but like Ty said, if you stub your toe a little bit, he makes you pay. But here's the thing, in order for these bulls to be able to show their stuff, they got to match up well with the riders. And J.W. Hart, I don't know if this is the best matchup for Bruiser to really get to show that big explosive power he's got. You know what, I'm not sure that it's not a great matchup for him, because Emilio is going to bear down. He is going to try his guts out. He's going to get wild on it, on top of him. He's going to have that free arm flinging and flying. And when this bull goes back the other way, look for him to get wilder. And I think it's a great matchup for him. The bull's big enough to handle him. I think it's a, I think it's a match made in heaven. Shorty, the great thing about Sweet Pro's Bruiser is he just makes this sport fun to watch. Well, he does. You know, he, he's such a great athlete, and I can tell you what, he's got a disadvantage because of the way he bucked in bucking guys off. Remember Troubadour, remember Mossy Oak Mudslinger. Watch this bull when he kicks. Both of his hind feet are going to be even in the air. That translates down his back, which is going to make his back even. He doesn't have that roll left to right, but he's such a great athlete, and he bucks so hard that if you miss the front end one time, you are going to pay the price. This could be for a title. And much like you all feared, Sweet Pro's Bruiser may not have had enough time to fully showcase his skills. Bottom line, he blew Hasende off his back in under two seconds. Well, athletically speaking, I mean, this one does some crazy stuff. We've seen him jump backwards. And this, this one right here, you see him travel a long ways in the air sideways. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Watch him turn back right here. I mean, just really getting in the air. Now, watch this move right here. This, he started right here. Now, which way is he going? I mean, it's like he goes backwards awesome. and sideways all at the same time. That bull is, a, is as good an athlete as I've ever seen in the sport. Yeah, and J.W. Hart, I think you're back there with him. This bull, the jump he takes after the guy hits the ground, I think that sells it every time. I ain't just back here at Bruiser. I got the guy that pulled the trigger on him. HD, good job. Proud of your bull? Yeah, man. Mark can't explain it, so I'm tickled. We're proud for you. Good job, Bruiser. Bruiser scores 47. That moves him ahead of Pearl Harbor for the moment. Keep in mind, 
Bruiser already named the PRCA Bull of the Year, trying to win the PBR World Champion Bucking Bull title. He'd only be the second bull in history to do that behind Bodacious, and also trying to be only the fourth bull, Justin McBride, to go back-to-back -back world titles. Yeah, and he just put up 47 with a guy on his back for one jump. <laughs> Clearly, the judges were impressed. Let's see what everyone thinks of this pairing. Gage Gay Ty is going to face Cooper Tires Semper Fi. Yeah, this bull's going to be to the to the left, right there in the shoot, and he has a ton of pushback. So that means Gage has got to keep the weight running down his feet and keep those toes turned out where those spurs can help him if this bull causes him to lose his balance and start to tip forward. This is one of 33 bulls that Chad Berger has here. now two for two and even though Cooper Tire Semper Fi tried to get all squirrely Gage Gay stayed stuck in the middle. McBride this is a, a perfect example of what we're talking about in those feet buying you a second chance this bull clicks one heel but he keeps his other foot down. John this is wanting to make the whistle. Gage Gay gets raised up around there but it, what I love about it is every time this bull would raise him up and maybe pop his head up, gets close to a touch there, but he would get his head back down and get right back in the fight. He would re-engage every time. I know it's a long week, guys, but let's give Gage Gay some credit. He just set a personal best. He has never had multiple rides in the World Finals. Now he has two. This is Luciano De Castro. Losing my religion causes Luciano to lose any chance at all of making eight. That ends at two and a half. You know, the first thing is you got to believe you can, and, and I, don't, I don't feel like Luciano's believing it. He knows at this point right here that he's going to quit. And, you know, when you're getting on the Bulls that are out in this round, they're all going to give you that chance to quit. You're not going to be able to set in perfect position on any of these. We mentioned Sweet Pros. Bruiser's out. Well, guess what? 47 points allows him to take a four one hundredths of a point lead over Pearl Harbor, who's out is just around the corner. Next up, we get to check in with the bull that's also on that list. It's going to be Brennan Eldred Mack against Cochise. Yeah, and this is a bull that you would think if the if the top two would falter, which Bruiser did not. This is a bull that could slide in there because he's big, he's strong, he's he's exciting to watch. But Brendan Eldred's a guy that I think is capable of riding this bull. This young guy has got a lot of ability. Look for Coach Ease, though, to be out here a few and around to the left, really strong. 13 of his last 18 buck-offs have happened under four seconds, so expect the fireworks fast and furious. Brennan Eldred almost hit a home run, but Cochise just able to work enough to end that. Boy, he did, a lot, he did a lot right for a long time. That's what I'm talking about with this guy. He's going to be going to the National Finals Rodeo again here in another month. He's got some ability, man. He can really ride. And when he gets it all put together, when he gets this last half a second that he needs out of this one, this guy is going to be tough to beat. Cochise has finished his day at the office as has Brennan Eldred. Is being there with round one winner, Jess Lockwood. Bruiser's done as well. Now Pearl Harbor awaits his moment with every intention of regaining that top ranking. 2018 marks a major milestone in professional bull riders history. It's the 25th anniversary of the PBR World Finals in Las Vegas. You can join past world champions and fans from around the world for this epic event, which will be here at T-Mobile Arena. It's going to be a week of the world's best bull riding, concerts, fan events, and a lot more. Tickets are now on sale. Call PBR Customer Service or visit AXS.com to lock in those seats today.
We're ready for our Machinery Auctioneers Section 3 lineup, and it begins with a bang. Australian Lachlan Richardson is going to try his hand against Pearl Harbor, the number one ranked bull for most of the season. Working our way down to three-time PRCA world champ Sage Kimsey as well. A lot to bring in, but Shorty, let's talk about this matchup. Pearl Harbor against Lachlan. Well, Pearl Harbor's a great bull. He's got, he had the lead coming in here, but I can tell you, he better bring his A game after watching Bruiser. But I like Pearl Harbor's chances against uh, this matchup because I can tell you right now, Lachlan Richardson, he likes to ride with his knees up, but he's free, or his riding arm a little bit straight. That's going to put him back on his pocket. This bull's got a lot of drop and forward movement. That's going to want to throw him over the front end. If it gets dramatic enough on the dismount, it could help him in the world title race. J-Dub as our contractor on our team. What can you do with your bull? We just saw HD Page get it all out of Bruiser. What can Chad Berger do to try to get the most out of Pearl Harbor? You, you don't do anything different. You, you've done it. You've done your due diligence already. You have fed him. You have got the horn infection straightened out. You've exercised him. You've got him prepared. You've got him in the chute. You do things happen. You do what got you here. Stay with what brought you. And Tie the now, flank just like you've done it every single time. Let the bull do his job and just hope the judges don't mess it up and that the guy rides him long enough that they can get that good score. And that's got to be tough to do right there. Not to ask for more than you usually do after you see Bruiser go out and put up 47. Yeah, watch the amount of, of break over and drop that this bull has. He launches that front end into, into the air and then I mean it's a sharp move back to the ground. Well, Lachlan Richardson did his job, if you can call it that, because he allowed Pearl Harbor to spend a lot of time working, which allows the judges a lot of time to pick apart this out, Ty. I'll tell you what, I, th I thought the bull left there bucking and minted every, every bit of the way, but Lachlan Richardson just had a pretty good seat on him until he got really way back on his arm. Now, when you're talking about a bull race and you're talking about a judged event, it doesn't matter. A bull rider is up against this too. You have to do something to catch the judge's eye. And in my opinion, Bruiser had the more flashy out. Thank you for saying that. Mac, your quick assessment, which bull was flashier? Yeah, Bruiser was, he had all the fireworks. 45 and a quarter for Pearl Harbor. The judges agree, and that means Bruiser should have a not substantial, but a solid lead going into that final out, which we think will be in the championship round on Sunday for both of those bulls. We've moved on. This is Claudio Montagna Jr. facing Shona. I love this bull right here. Look for him to be to the left. Kind of an old school looking brittle tie, but he is a good one. Yeah, this bull, this bull is, is real good and, and you know, really everything that we're seeing, the, the, the main thing is when you got one of these ranked ones that turns back away from your hand, it's all balance. Our Yeti World Bull standings, there it is. Sweet Pro's Bruiser on top of Pearl Harbor by 17 one hundredths of a point. And guys, hey, this is not decided. Remember the years with airtime where we thought he had locked it in and then that second out cost him. Yeah, it has so much to do with the matchup and the way it all works out. And, and trust me, when you buck a guy off in a spectacular way, it really adds to what the bull looks like. Now time to check in with Ryan Dirt Eater. DQ'd in round number one. He faces here, cut the cord. This is a chance for him to get the train back on the track right here. I think if you'd have gave Ryan Dirty Eater the opportunity to pick his bull out of this set, this would have been one of the ones that, that he would have wanted. This is a really good bull, a rematch. Bull can go either direction, likes the right, but I have seen him go left. Shouldn't matter. Dirty Eater needs to chew this one up right now. of the Ryan Dirtyder we saw a year ago. Dirtyder gets it done, accepts the congratulations from his comrades, and then comes out for a curtain call.
Well, this looks great. You know, you're talking about a huge mistake last night, not getting out of the shoot. I can, you know, that is something that should not happen. I mean, it, when, when the judges start the clock on you and you just take a no score, that, that ruined his whole week. Yeah, but I'm glad he didn't carry it over into tonight. Got rid of that and came out here and performed. Takes a little shot right there on the way out, but good job getting the job done. He's with Leah. What's the go for broke attitude you'd have after DQ in round one? Uh, you know what, first off, I just want to thank my family and my sponsors and all the fans that are out there. Uh, you know, after getting DQ'd, I really couldn't say much about it. You know, I'm just letting my actions speak for itself and just having fun, keep letting it roll like Cooper Tires does down the road. Craig. <laughs> Nice little plug there by Ryan Dirtyder. He's multitasking a little bit as we move on to Cody Campbell, who faces a bull now tied by the name of Utter Lover. Yeah, this bull uh, likes the likes the right and has a little bit of pushback. That you know, I talk about that pushback and. Pushback actually feels really good. It's something that can help keep setting you up on that rope. We talk about bulls that are wrong. Everything's always going away from you. A bull with pushback, it's just the opposite. They're always wanting to set you to that rope, but there is also a tendency that they want to whip your upper body forward and make your feet go back behind you. So it's very important to set those hips and keep your toes turned out. And I know Cody Campbell has got to be thrilled with this draw, J.W. Hart. He was supposed to have your rodeo time. Rodeo time couldn't go, so he gets under lover. Oh, yeah, it kind of hurt my feelings. He was so much more happier about this one, but <laughs> I can't say that I disagree with him. This moves in the air and to the right, right here. Hipped him. Re-ride flag. Thank you, Shorty. Re-ride flag comes out. That means Cody Campbell will get another opportunity. Sometimes you're happy about that re-ride because it's going to be a good bull. But, man, he had a good one right here. You hate it when that happens. We're told that the bull will be shoot boss that he will face and we'll get you that position when we can. We go back to Claudio Montagna Jr. against Show Nuff once again. Montagna's got to want to make the whistle right here. Keep his head down because this guy can really ride. <laughs> well, it looked like the bull helped him out. We're still waiting to find out time-wise whether or not he made it. Some issues with when the clocks either started or whether or not Ty they even ran. They're going to go and look at this manually, and it certainly looked like he will, he'll, will be close to the required time. Well, you know, it's funny. I think all bull riders have an eight-second clock in their head. On my clock, it felt like his... <laughs> His might have been a little bit early, but maybe that's because I never heard the whistle. Yeah, the bull tries to turn back too close, but you watch after Claudio gets off. He lets everybody know he made it for eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that's his vote. Yeah. And the judges have now agreed. Montagna Jr. is going to get 87 and a half. And keep in mind, that ties him for first in the round with J.W. Harris. And it's the scores in this round that decide how you will pick your bull, how you will draft for round number three. So an important 87 and a half for the Brazilian. PBR Built for Tough Series World Finals on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Schick Extreme 3. Schick Extreme 3 has three flexible blades that adapt to contours. The ranked pen has had their way with most of the Cowboys this evening. Only six qualified rides. Shane Proctor, Mason Lowe, Alex Marsilio, they have all met a similar fate at the hooves of this bull power we are seeing. Let's remind you what's available for all these Cowboys during a points if you win a round. 1,800 total points therefore available through just the rounds. If you're the overall cumulative winner, a 1,500 point bonus, which means as of tonight of those 3,300, 3,000 points still available. 
and show you who's done well so far. Well, Gage Gay and Jose Vitor Leme, he is, they're tied, 172 and a half. The only two men with two qualified rides, Jess Lockwood still to ride, as is Fabiano, Derek Colbaba, Silvano Alves, and Sage Kimsey sitting in 10th as our through tubing sky cam brings you back to the shoots. And Shorty, it's going to be Sage Kimsey who's next on Super Stinger. Absolutely. This bull can have two trips. He can be really pretty rank, and then he can be just okay. Uh, but it seems to me that usually the first trip we get to see him, he's pretty rank. He's going to be out here a couple, probably going to have some roll to the right, and then go to the left. That's going to be away from Sage Kimsey's hand, so it's going to want to roll him into his hand, and then the bull goes away from it. But this is a guy that has absolutely all the tools necessary to ride a bull. This is a great bull rider. He's proved it for year in and year out. I like his chances. Even though this bull's gonna be really hard to get by, and if he can ride this bull, he should be able to ride the rest of them all week long. I like his chances though, guys. Ty, when he did that interview with Leah at the top of the show, he mentioned that he feels like he really doesn't have anything to lose. Did you have moments like that in your career? Well, very, very few times. And, you know, for me, it, it, sports is about proving something. And, and Every time I did it, I was trying to prove something. And, and you know, I had a goal from early on that I wanted to be the world's best. And, and so it didn't matter where I was. It didn't matter what the amount was. I had something to prove. Even if I was getting on for fun, I, I was going at it with something to prove because you're talking about a sport that can kill you. So, you know, it, very, very rarely did it just feel like getting on a bull was nothing to me. Yeah, and I think every time you get on, you're trying to prove something to yourself that you can ride whatever bulls that you're attempting. I think Sage was just deflecting and, and trying to keep his mind on the competition because he does have his hands full with this bull. Shorty talked about it. To me, this bull, big, strong. You don't know the exact pattern of him, but you know it's going to be hard. But I do think that Kimsey is up to the task. I said it yesterday, and I'll keep saying it again. This guy has got a solid enough foundation that I don't care what bull you run under him, he can fit him. We've seen not just the ride in round one, but if you saw the rides from the real-time Velocity Tour Finals, he seemed unstoppable, guys. I mean, he stays in that box. He has very little need for corrections on the back of a bull because it seems like Mac, he makes it look so easy. No wasted motion with this guy. He's got a plan for every move that he does. It's not just a hope. He knows where he's going, and that's to the middle each and every jump. Take a look at that helmet, by the way. You don't think he knows a thing or two about gold? Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! All right, Sage. Super Stinger has a message for Sage Kimsey. Not all bulls are alike. That is a rank, rank, tough bull. Now, he's not in the conversation. We don't see him a lot throughout the year. You only see him a handful of times. And Shorty talked about the first trip is his best. Well, this was his first trip right here, and he is a handful. Well, in Ty, let's talk about the subtext of that quick buck off. He is now going to have a horrible pick for tomorrow's round. Absolutely, you know, and that's the thing about bull riding is that them bulls can't read your buckle, and if you don't leave there without them, that's how they make you pay, especially in the rank 10. You can see he's disappointed in himself. He'll have to wait until tomorrow to regroup. This is Taylor Tovis aboard Muscles and Shovels. And he dug himself a deep hole early on. Well, this is going to be the littlest bull that we're probably going to see this year at the PBR World Finals. And them little ones, they're a little harder to get a hold of. There's a lot less to sit on. Yeah, and a tall, lanky guy right here, you know, so that's working against him. But you see how he gets beat around the corner. I love the effort that he put out trying to get there. He knew he's in bad shape. He's way behind, but he says, you know what? I don't care. I'm at the PBR Finals. I'm going to give it everything I got. Had a chance with to speak with him in the locker room earlier tonight. He said he just looked around a lot last night during introductions and had to refocus a little bit to remember, even though this was his first time in Las Vegas, that he had to keep convincing himself that he belonged with the guys and the other guys in the locker room. This is Cole Livingston, who comes into this World Finals struggling of late. He's only ridden two of his last 20 bulls and most of those buck offs have been relatively quickly. Ty, what do you think he can do against Mo Leap? 
Well, this bull's going to be around to the left, and you know this. I think that this is a chance for him. You, it's going to come down to how much he believes in himself. And you know what? I always look at it when these ranked bulls are in. It's a lot like prize fighting. You know, when Mike Tyson was on a tear, most of the guys that he beat were beat before they even stepped into the ring. You see that sometimes in the rank pen. The guys that believe they can are the ones that have a chance. And I believe he can against this bull. This is the lighter end of this rank pen. And this is a guy, Greg, we've watched him all year. He's got some ability. You see him make some good rides. He hasn't been able to string them together and find the consistency, but he's also dealing with a terrible shoulder. You know, it comes out on him all the time. And I, I've said it time and time again, this is a bad place to come in with an injury. You mentioned the shoulder. It is his left shoulder, which is the free arm. And he told me earlier this season that he's dislocated it over two dozen times. Another guy that has surgery planned for after this week of riding and of course hoping he can just make it through five or six rounds. I've seen this guy right here, Cole Livingston, make a really good controlled ride, get off and have to go put his shoulder back in. Doesn't make the eight seconds, but gang, Ty, I'll start with you for almost six seconds. He did a great job of keeping that free arm tucked and really matching Molik. Well, he has to, but I'm telling you, that's like going into a fight with, with one arm tied behind your back. Your free arm is the pilot for your body. So where you put that hand is, is where you're wanting your body to go. When you're seeing a guy wanting to get out over a bull, he's going to reach forward with it. When a guy's got to get over to the left, that's when you're going to see him really throw it that way. Look how balled up he is with this arm. Look how far down he's keeping it. Just It doesn't hardly leave his side right there the whole way. So here you're having to ride with all core. There's nothing to help give, give you the momentum you need to have the counter movement. The end result for Cole Livingston is a familiar one of late. It's a quick buck off. And he will have to go back to the locker room, not only nurse that shoulder, but also try to figure out a way to get something going. That was a spectacular effort, McBride. It, it was a great effort, and it, that's the thing. With these injuries, it's going to be a long week for Cole. Silvano Alves last night got his week started in a big way. Keep in mind, the three-time PBR World Champion, remember, for years could do no wrong. And last night, Mac, he looked like the old Silvano. That's exactly right. Away from his hand, too. That's what I like to see. You got to do things right when a bull spins that direction. Silvano looked unstoppable. This is what stood out to me. I mean, he showed more emotion in that one ride than we saw him show in three world titles, you know. And that's the thing that we're seeing now. This guy used to have ice water run through his veins, and now he's really showing some emotion. He faces a bull by the name of Carrot Top, and in terms of Bill Ford Tough Series, only one out. That was back in Raleigh, Mac, where he booked off Cooper Davis. Well, and that tells you all you need to know yeah, right there. Well. If he's good enough to do that, he belongs in the rank pin. Once again, Alves on the clock, like in round number one. He let it wind down all the way to within five seconds. There's the nine. Like, oh, he got yeah, yeah, hit. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Boy, oh boy, he's going to get a second score, guys, but he paid for it. Silvano Alves is going to have to relive some scary moments, Ty, as we watch this. Hey, this comes from putting it out there, and this looks like the shades of the three-time world champion. This bull is making him bear down, and he's giving it everything he's got. And when you try that hard, you're going to get into compromising positions. And watch this bull's hind feet come down on him right here. I tell you, that's a great time to have on a vest. 86 and a quarter for the score. And no out. Miraculous healing from Silvano Alves. The excitement is back, and Mac, I started to lead you to say why. 86 and a quarter, he's now the overall event leader, and he's with Leah. What was that impact like, Silvano, when you got stepped on? I know, he's happened for bull riding, you know? And uh, I'm, I feel great, and um, stay perfect with my bull. Thank God, thank my family, thank my, all my sponsors. Thanks for watching tonight. Good job, Craig.
Well, there's your new bumper sticker. Getting stomped happens. Silvano Alves knows it's part of the job. A second score for the three-time PBR World Champ. And he's got some time to have fun with the camera. Another master moment, one of the greatest riders ever, now turning into one of the greatest commentators ever, and we're gonna see how he can coach at the PBR's Global Cup, which is gonna stream live from Edmonton, Canada, November 10th through 11th. You can download the free PBR app for both iOS and Android, or you can just visit pbr.com slash Global Cup for all the details. Mr. McBride, you're gonna get to match wits with those other four coaches. How do you like your chances? Nah, there's some great guys on the screen there gonna be representing all the countries. And Man, I can't wait for it. I, I love the team that the U.S. has. There's a great group of young men on there. One of the guys who's gonna be on Team Brazil is the man prepping in the shoots. And among a few of his accolades, let's talk about the most obvious. No one has ridden more bulls in the history of the PBR, Ty Murray. Last night was number 611. One of those 611 happened on the bull. He just happens to be on right now. That was Tulsa last season for 84 and a half. But right, this is kind of a skinny slab-sided bull, and he turns back to the right. That's a big mistake when you have Guilherme Marchi on your back. Now, this bull will reverse, as you see here. Guilherme handled it just fine when it came at about seven seconds. If that bull's smart, he's going to try that a lot sooner tonight. I've seen this bull quite a few times after that trip. He's filled up some. He's gotten a lot stronger, and I think he's a lot ranker now. But I still like Marchi to get the job done. This bull has been out a dozen times this season, last of which was Alex Marsilio back in Nampa in the championship round. Eduardo Aparecido, the last to ride him. That's when we were in Colorado Springs in the championship round for 88 and a half. Marchi trying to become only the fourth guy so far to go two for two. He's on the clock. Now down to 20. Burn it down, did not have a good out. The clock stopped at 5.97, so you have to wonder if you think a judge saw him touch the bull. If they do not see a touch, Ty Murray, the re-ride flags came out. Yeah, this bull, really an off day. Take a look right here. This is where it gets a little sketchy. Oh. Tell you what, that pole cam right there is a little blurry, but that looks like a slap to me. If they call a slap, Marchi will lose the re-ride opportunity. In order for that to happen, he needs to make a qualified ride, even though the bull did not do his job. Here's gonna be a better look at it. Yeah, no question, slaps him right on top of the face right there. After placing 10th last night, he's going to get called for a slap this evening. That's, that time is going to stand. And remember, the time's important because that will slot him in based on buck-off time. And this crowd inside T-Mobile Arena agrees with Guilherme Marchi. They do not like the judge's decision in Marchi. A little bit vocal right there with what he thought of the judges. We'll move on to Australian Troy Wilkinson, who will be on the Australian team at the Global Cup next week in Edmonton, Canada. He faces a bull with quite a history, Justin McBride, stone sober. Yeah, this is a great bull. J.W. Hart, I know you love this bull. I think Troy Wilkinson, though, is going to surprise everybody in riding J.W. I'll tell you what he's not going to do. He's not going to jump off of him. This guy comes in it to win it. 
He's gonna pack his hand in that rope, tie it in there for all it's worth. Get, do or die right here. Troy Wilkinson's gonna put it all on the line. It's gonna be a great matchup. This good little bull rider and a great bucket bull. They're gonna get it on right here to the left. I don't know who wins this one. Well, we know he's probably gonna start left, but that's all we know. And three of the greatest pictures of a buck and bull that I've ever seen, all three came from this one. And Stone Sober finds a way yet again. That was his 75th career out, Mac, and he's only been ridden five times. Yeah, and that was not one of his best outs. I mean, he gets the job done, but he gets lost right here, usually turns back right there. Now he takes off long, jumps, looks like maybe he's gonna find a spot. Nope, he takes off again. That was not the best day for Stone Sober. Still tough to get by, and like I said, gets the job done. Troy Wilkinson now has to walk back to the locker room, clearly frustrated, but most importantly, 0 for 2 so far to show for his few seconds of work. This is Cody Campbell. It's his re-ride opportunity. He's been given a bull tie by the name of Shoot Boss. Yeah, this bull's gonna be around to the right, right there, good. And, you know, this is how the, the last bull he had was supposed to be, and when that bull bumped his hip, it, it changed his mind. Cody Campbell had a great seat, then Shoot Boss was able to lift him up just a little bit, and then it snowballed. Man, and Campbell knows that that's such a cool bull, especially to be able to get on him in the rank pin. I don't want to take anything away from him because he's giving it everything he's got, this bull, but everything he's got is really good to ride for a bull rider. Yeah, especially when you're stacking him up against the other 39 bulls that we're looking at tonight. Seven qualified rides so far in round number two. Silvano Alves leading the event overall. His two qualified rides, they add up to 173 and three quarters. But he's not finished. Still to come, fan favorite, J.B. Mooney. Start your engines, ladies and gentlemen. J.B. Mooney definitely grasps the magnitude of the moment. When J.B. Mooney is mad, he makes the Bulls pay. Do you guys see the difference in the level? J.B. needed a round win, he got it. As the PBR rides on from Las Vegas. We saw 2008 PBR world champ Guilherme Marchi get heated as he left the arena. Well, he came back and had some words with shoot boss Cody Custer and Mac is we know those of us around this sport a lot. That's not the first time the two of them have gone at each other. No, there's been some heated exchanges in the past, and Guilherme March, he's fired up, man. He's trying to win something, and uh, things can get pretty heated down there. Yeah, I think that speaks to Guilherme's passion. You know, the thing of it is, is in bull riding, there's so much there's so much that you got it that you do have control of, and that's one of the things. The judging is something you don't have control of, so you don't want to burn a lot of energy on something that you can't change. Ramon De Lima is going to see if he can change his fate compared to a lot of other men that have sat on the back of Magic Train. This bull has one of the most impressive records, Justin McBride, that we have seen all night long well and guys and i go to jw hard on this i feel like this bull is just around at a bad time having to compete against bruiser and pearl harbor because jw i think this is a great little bull right here it's an outstanding boy and, and you know a lot like some of our bull riders with just a little more consistency on the second trip of, of a, a certain venue you know if he could get that good trip the second day this bull would be in the in the talks for buck and bull of the year you watch him this bull right here could be runner, run, runner up and if they ain't watching real close. 52 career outs for Magic Train, another great bull from Jared Allen's pro bull team. Been out eight times this season alone. Bucked off Brennan Eldred in Colorado Springs in the championship round. A perfect 8-0 record this season, Ty. Yeah, he's gonna go out there a couple. He's gonna turn back to the right and there's a good chance he's gonna go back the other way before it's all said and done. It takes six seconds, but Magic Train finally 
derails DeLima's day. I thought he was really impressive, too. I, I mean, he might not have turned back as close or this or that, but everything getting to the spin is rank. He's steep. He's got a lot of kick. And then when he finds his spot, I mean, he's got some bruiser moves right here. Yeah, and some bushwhacker moves where you see his front end come up before his hind end comes down. But, you know, the biggest thing is when you see one shift gears like that and change up the timing. To me, that was always the hardest thing. Doesn't matter how hard they're bucking, when they're giving you a rhythm, you can get with it. When they're changing that rhythm is when you'll start to struggle. Well, we saw Guilherme Marchi's emotion a few moments ago. Another guy that rides with emotion, especially in Las Vegas. Look at some of these stats. He's won 16 rounds, 17 90-plus point rides. He's finished in the top five on seven different occasions. Let's listen to the music. I'm not sure who gets pumped up more now, gang. Mooney or the crowd when they hear this? I think both. <laughs> and for, for great reason, too. You know, every time Mooney gets in the shoot, there's a chance of seeing something great. And, and that is awesome. You know, as I was saying earlier, I think every great competitor has a chip on his shoulder. He has something to prove. And, and JB loves it when people think that he can't do it. He, he loves it when he has an injury and people say, oh, he's too hurt. The doctor told him he shouldn't come back. He's not ready. The screws could pull loose. The more that you stack on, the more he rises to the occasion. And, and that's something that has made him special and made him one of the most dynamic bull riders of all time. We just showed you he's on the door knocking at 500. <laughs> but Boot Jack had a dead very different idea for how this evening was going to go. J.B. Mooney handed his hat and possibly the shoulder shaken up in the process. Well, just like Sage Kimsey, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how many titles you've won on these ranked bulls. When you miss the front end and, they, and you're late and you don't get up there where you need to be, they are going to jerk you into your hand as hard as it can possibly be jerked. Boot Jack is such a tough bull, too. Every, he's been around a few years, always in championship rounds. Guys never have an answer for him. That's a tough one, especially for a pretty much one-armed Mooney to try and get by. Well, and keep in mind, on many occasions when we've seen J.B. Mooney get mad at himself for getting bucked off, the next night he comes back and sets the world on fire. J.B. Mooney, well, when we come back, we're going to get a glimpse of his decision-making to come back this week. What a list of champions this is. Only five men have won multiple world titles. Adriana Mariah, Silvano Alves, they have their three. Shivers, McBride, and Mooney, two apiece. And when you talk about J.B. Mooney, he has always dealt with injuries, but his latest has tested him like none other. Chances of getting hurt riding bulls is 100%. It eventually happens to everybody. It's the Calgary Stampede! It was a little warm that day, and the rosin I use on my rope, it's pretty gummed up, pretty sticky stuff. Well, a few days before that, it had been kind of cool, so I put extra rosin on there so it would be sticky. Well, when it warms up, then it, you know, the warmer it gets, the stickier it gets. Whistle blew, I was kind of out of shape, a little behind, and I knew there was no way I could get to my tail before he jerked me out of there, and I knew I was going to hang. I mean, I opened my hand hoping that it would pop out, but it wasn't going to, and I figured I was going to hang up. When he whipped me to the outside, my rope slipped across his back and uh, slid down his side. He kicked at me. When he stepped on me, it slapped me on the ground hard enough that it knocked me out. My shoulder popped out. We were right up next to the buck and shoot, so the bull either had to go left or right. Well, unfortunately, when he turned, he saw me laying there and just run right back over the top of me. 
I woke up, you know, face down in the dirt. My hat was smashed into my face. I couldn't see anything. Uh, I started pushing open my left arm and couldn't figure out why in the world my right arm would not work. That's when I realized my shoulder was pretty much down in my armpit. 12 years riding bulls professionally, and I've never been carried out on a backboard or a stretcher or anything like that. I've always, I've been in some bad wrecks, but I've always got up and walked out on my own two feet, and they thought it was really bad. Uh, I'd say, yeah, you know, if there's somebody out there that's got a chance of making it all work again, he's as good a candidate as anybody. Only history will tell where JB falls amongst the greats. JB Mooney is your 2013 PBR world champion. It takes six months for soft tissue to heal solidly enough to bone to withstand the stresses that are applied to that soft tissue with bull riding. Trying to come back any sooner than that puts him at risk. I wouldn't rule out JB being back 100% at some point in the future. He's one of those people that when he does set his mind to something, he's able to do it. He said the end of January, and at the time, I told him I'll be back by the 1st of January. And uh, I may put... We have already seen not only does J.B. Mooney love a challenge, but he loves to rise to the occasion. Well, when we come back, we are going to send it out to the inside the PBR set with Kate Harrison and a very special guest. Welcome back to round two of the PBR World Finals here in Las Vegas. Kate Harrison alongside our PBR insider, Justin Felisco. And if you're thinking, where is this fancy place they are? It's our pre-show set, so you got to tune in early tomorrow night. But before we look forward, Justin, you're on the back of the shoots for every single guy so far tonight. Who's impressed you the most? Kate, Silvano Alves, a three-time world champion. We talked so much this week about who could play spoiler. J.B. Mooney, Sage Kimsey, they both buck off and... Who would have thought Silvano Alves, two for two, and making a run here in Las Vegas? Always impressive right here in Las Vegas. Now, some other Brazilians that are in the top five in Eduardo Parecido and Kaique Pacheco did not ride last night looking for some redemption tonight. It's a must ride, Kate, and here's why. The last nine world champions have never bucked off their first two bulls at the world finals. We'll see now. Pacheco and Parecido, they both bucked off last night. They know the stakes are that much higher tonight here in round two coming up. And then once we get through tonight, the script flips a bit for tomorrow because the guys get to pick who they're getting on. Are there some heavy favorites down in the locker room for this draft? All night long, the riders have been studying, Kate. Silvano Alves, Kaique Pacheco, two of the smartest Brazilians in the locker room when it comes to these bulls. They spent a lot of time going over the list. Pacheco has notes on every single bull in this round three draft, but the bull to watch is Crazy Horse. This bull, 15 and 14, on the built four tough series. And last year in round three, Pacheco rode this bull for 89 points to win the round. This bull that he wants, Silvano Alves wants, and a Parasito wants. Cooper Davis, we saw him studying in the locker room. Still to come tonight, a reigning PBR world champ. He has a run tonight, but I have a feeling he's already thinking tomorrow, isn't he? Does he have a favorite too? You know what? At first he said, no, I'm not looking at it. But with about 10 minutes before the event started tonight, he looked at that list. He wants a rematch as well. Hammered down the bull he rode last year in round three. That's in the round three draft. He has his eye on that bull, Kate. But still got to see our top five get past tonight. Round number two coming up. But tune in tomorrow 
for inside the PBR World Finals, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll have Adriana Moraes on. Right now, though, we'll head in after the break to Craig Hummer and the guys as round two continues from Las Vegas. Our top four in the world separated by less than 300 points. These are our matchups. They will be at the end of the evening. Kolbaba against Cracker Breaker. Parasito, Freak of Nature. Jess Lockwood goes up against Breaking Bad. And Cooper Davis versus Smooth Operator. Shorty Gorham, of all these four, which one's your Matador pick of the pen? Well, Craig, I'm going to go with Smooth Operator, and it's not because he's smooth. This is a bull that's a veteran bull. He's a hard bull to ride. He's going to be out of a left-hand delivery. He'll fake to the left, go to the right, or he'll go to the left. But one thing to watch for, as soon as this bull leaves the chute, that first jump, he's going to be rolling his back to that outside and then planning on going left. He's going to at least throw that fake. It wants you into your hand. Cooper Davis can ride this bull only because he has proven that he can ride the, the rank bulls. But this bull is a spoiler that could ruin the chances for Cooper Davis and a world title. Cooper's got to get it done tonight. I think he can do it, but he's going to have a hard time doing it. It doesn't matter how you say it, I'll repeat it. Every round matters this week in Vegas for our World Finals. It's probably going to take six for six to win this year's World Championship. Seven qualified rides so far this evening, and that last one we showed you from three-time PBR World Champion Silvano Alves. He has already had a chance to celebrate, and with good reason. Our top 12 in the world to go, including defending PBR World Champion Cooper Davis, who's standing by with Leah. It'll be Cooper's first opportunity to get on Smooth Operator. Give me a breakdown of what this ride's going to be like. You know, this bull's really strong. He's going to give a big fake to the left, probably, and go right, and uh, he means it. So I think as long as I get around that big fake, I'll be all right. What makes you nervous and or excited about the ride? I'm excited. We're about to be 90 points. I don't know about nervous, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, perfect. Thank you, Craig. Just turning midnight on the East Coast. We're glad you are staying up live on CBS Sports Network because the wait is going to be worth it. Our top dozen riders in the world based on the points they have earned all year long. But we can't emphasize enough, 3,000 points still available, Ty Murray, for all these guys. Rubens Barbosa is going to face up against Catfish John. Boy, this is a really good bull, Justin McBride. How do you think this match is up? I love the matchup. J.W. Hart, I think Rubens Barbosa, this strong little guy, Catfish John into his hands. Guys, I think uh, this is a really good matchup. You got Catfish John, the biggest bicep in the PBR. I'd like to see this guy arm wrestle Justin McBride, by the way. <laughs> it wouldn't last eight seconds. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. But you watch, this bull's going to be big and strong right here in the gate. This is a reminder that uh, Cooper Davis won a go around last year on his way to the world title. This is the bull that really cinched it for him in that next to the last go around. But I tell you what, when he gets it on right here in the gate, he has a little bit of a hold to him in a fine line, whether he wants the inside or he wants you the outside. If Rubens Barbosa doesn't get far enough inside, this bull's going to want him to the outside. And I don't think even with the bicep that he has, he's strong enough to hang on to this one because he's going to want him out of there big time. This bull is, I think this would be the bull to pick when you're looking at this. Especially for this guy. Pick, exactly right. I mean, right there into his hand, and he knows he's got to go at it. And, and you don't want to just throw those Hail Mary moves. You better be precise about it, and you better not be slow. Well, he's going to be throwing them, I can guarantee you. <laughs> this little guy's got one plan. That's to go with everything he's got to the right. Thank you. 
The last time Catfish John left the shoots, he had Rubens Barbosa on his back, and Nampa it lasted 2.73. Barbosa only able to eke out about a second more. Well, this is exactly what JW was talking about, and this is a smart bull, and it's a subtle thing. It's almost just a forward movement. When he feels you going to that inside, he just widens out a little bit, shoots forward a little bit, and dumps you right down on the center of that spin you know it's a smart bull that's not a one-trick pony when they have a lot of different ways to get you out it's just like having a great pitcher we move on to rookie of the year contender cody teal but a veteran in terms of what he's been able to do in the bull riding and rodeo world the 2012 prc world champion the 2016 calgary stampede champion in this round tie he faces smooth sailing yeah this bull's either direction i mean he's ranked he's strong and everything the thing that we got to see tonight from cody teal is not leaving that shoe with a hump in his back and that was the big thing that killed him last night you got to break forward at the hips Ty, you were able to coach him up there quite well. I think everybody could see how loose those hips were and how well he was able to react. Cody Teal, Mac, finally on the board here in Vegas. Well, that's just great stuff right there. You watch it right out across here. He's jerking on him pretty good. Right there, he gets him picked up, Ty, and he does not let it go till the eight seconds is up. Yeah, I mean, you can see it. When a guy when a guy counters that jump, it's like a light switch goes on. Everything just smooths out and gets easy. He found the groove, and he had the timing. Only the eighth qualified ride of round number two. That 85 points puts him into eighth overall. We'll move on to Denner Barbosa, who came into this week ninth in the world standings, about 2,100 points behind world number one, Derek Kolbaba. In this round, he's facing up against one of those bulls in the running for world champion bucking bull, Mac. It's TLW's Big Cat. Well, this is... This is one of the hardest to stay on bulls that's in the PBR. Talking about smooth operator coming up with Davis. This bull's a lot like him. Big, strong, can have some moves. Every once in a while, though, he'll just fall out of here and spin to the right. If he has that day, Barbosa needs to take advantage of it. Yeah, you don't. I have. I personally haven't seen that day. Every time I've seen this bull, I mean, he is an explosion leaving out of there. And big rank and means it. Shorty, you've gotten to see this bull a lot over the course of this season. He usually gets riders off his back very quickly. Well, he does, but but I have seen that trip out of, out of him that uh, Justin's talking about. It was right here, round number one last year. This bull was in the running for a world title race and just fell out of there and ran around. Luis Blanco rode him, uh, and it took this bull out of the world title race. So we'll see what round number one does for him here, or his first round here in Las Vegas this year does. That ride Shorty's mentioning was for 85 five and a half points. Cooper Davis rode this bull in Austin's 15-15 bucking battle for 91 and three quarters. <laughs> I've seen it now. <laughs> Denner Barbosa gets the ride, but you guys were highlighting the fact that sometimes TLW's big cat isn't as explosive as he should be. Hey, but when he has that day, that's what we're talking about. Take advantage of it. Barbosa does just that. I mean, you talk about the things you can't control. You can't control what that bull's going to do, but you can control what you do. And Barbosa, that was a good job by him. That becomes the ninth qualified ride of this round two. 86 and a quarter gets Denner Barbosa on board for the week. Something to build on as he gets to pick a bull in a very high placing for tomorrow's round three. This is Joao Ricardo Vieira facing short night. Great little bull right here. J.W. Hart, I got to see him earlier this season, and I know you know something about his background. Yeah, I do. I'm gonna get to get brag a little bit here. This bull's out of one of our cows. Short night makes it a very short evening for Joao.
Justin, it, it's it's almost like you, you know the the Brazilian way of riding. They they want to set down more and they want to pry up on that rope almost over their leg, and you know it makes them struggle with bulls that go away from their hand, and then it gets in their head, and it, it just becomes like a brain weevil. It just gets worse. Yeah. Joao has not started this week off the way he expected. He came in with a lot of momentum, but his compatriot, Silvano Alves, having a great time here in Las Vegas. He is your overall bad boy mower lead dog. Still to come, Chase Outlaw. Chase Outlaw with a victory over Modified Clyde. He is now four for eight in his career against that bull. He does not panic. Chase Outlaw just keeps fighting and working. This is an aggressive, gritty little bull rider. Every time he nods his head, he's gonna go at it. As the PBR rides on from Las Vegas. Let's show you the schedule of the rounds and how they are put together throughout the week. We're in the midst of the round two, and that, of course, was a draw. And how they place this evening determines how they will draft for round three. There will also be another draft in round five based on how the riders do in round number four. Then when you get to the championship round, our top 15 riders on championship Sunday, well, they will not get to pick their bull, which is the exact opposite of every regular season event that we do have. So you can see there are three men, a perfect two for two so far. Jess Lockwood, Fabiana Vieira, still to ride, as is Stormy Wing. And Shorty Stormy here faces a bull by the name of Jack Shot. Some issues with Shorty's microphone, so I'll go to the guys up in the booth. Mac, how much of an advantage does either Stormy or Jack Shot have? Well, I think that Jack Shot has the advantage here. I look for him to go to the right. He's got some forward movement. And here's the thing to remember with Jack Shot. He's stronger at eight seconds than he is when he first gets into the spin, and it's away from Stormy's hand. You know, and that's something that can really make a bull special is, is when they just gain momentum. and. You know, I, I think all riders' tendency is the closer it gets to that whistle, the more you have a tendency to want to kind of clamp down and hold what you got, especially when you're getting out of position. And it is just imperative to remember that whatever the move you got to make is, is the move you got to make. And it doesn't matter if it's at two seconds or seven and a half seconds, you've got to remember to keep riding. A lot of times you hear these guys say, ride for 10. That's to help remind them of that. Mac, I'll go to you first. This bull has almost 30 outs on the Built Ford Tough Series. Two men have only been able to ride him. Eduardo Aparecido twice and Kaiki Pacheco. Why is that? Right hand down, my friend. <laughs> and they're both exceptionally great bull riders. And so is Stormy. Stormy has had the season, best season of his career. But he's been struggling a little bit as a play. I would love to see him get it going here. And if he stays to the front end every round, he's got a chance. Only one for his last nine. This would be a great way to turn that all around. Instead, it doesn't take much for Jack Shot to get Wing wondering what he could have done. You know, the strength of this bull really shows up, and Stormy never never gets up over that jump the way he would have wanted to. He's strung out from the word go, and that, you know, that's the tough part. When, when you miss the jump on a bull that strong, there is zero chance. You're not gonna luck into it. You're not gonna be able to cut one off. There's not a Hail Mary move that's gonna get you there. There's only one thing you can do, and that's counter that jump, each and every jump for the whole eight seconds. Next up, Fabiano Vieira, who 24 hours ago had an amazing ride on Inferno, second in the round, and Matt has moved him all the way up to seventh in the world. Shorty, let's go to you. What do you think of this pairing with Mystical? Well, this is a guy that, you know, I, I hate to bet against. This is a guy that's very talented. We talk about his shoulder issues that he's had, and he's had them for a long time, long enough, in fact, Greg, that he's learned how to adapt his riding to it. You just see him, what he does, he'll, he'll turn it. That bull's going to the left, he's going to pick up on that rope, drops his left shoulder, tilts his head to the inside, and gets that weight on the inside leg. Does the opposite go in the opposite way. Oh, shit! 
I'll tell you what, that is that is big time dangerous, and I've had that happen. Sometimes when you're coming off, you have that spur hanging that flank rope, which is what I believe it hung in right here. One time I had a bull drag me around for about 10 seconds, and I'll tell you, it was the scariest 10 seconds of my life. Again, he just misses that jump on that front end. That bull gets his arm straight and gets to jerking on him. See, as that foot's coming over, it just hangs in that soft cotton rope in the tail end of it, almost in the loop. You see the bullfighter jump on him, Shorty Gorm, in order to get enough weight on him to pull him loose. Look at Shorty, get right down on him, says we're gonna, the weight of both of us will get you loose. Great job, Shorty. Fabiano Vieta able to exit safely. And Ty, you mentioned Shorty, and we have seen night in and night out throughout, not just this year, but the careers of those four men. They are out there to make sure the bull rider comes back for the next round, whether it's the next day, the next week, or sometime after any sort of break. This is Chase Outlaw, still number six in the world. He was unable to beat Mr. Majestic in round one. Here he faces Speed Demon, and I know, Mac, you guys talked about this on the pre-show. I love the bull and the rider, but two little, strong, wiry athletes right here that are about to go at it. Speed Demon, if this bull gains another 500 pounds of muscle over the next year or so, I think this could be... Maybe not quite 500, maybe another 100 or two. That was getting a little extreme there. I got myself. You got excited. Yeah, I did. Because I do love this bull, and I think this bull could be a contender for bull of the year. I think that much of this bull. And Outlaw has kept himself in the race. He's, he's lost some ground, but he's kept himself in a world championship race this season. So I think this is a great matchup. J-Dub, this bull is very appropriately named. Speed is, speed is of his of, of his best abilities that this bull acquires. I'm telling you, and it don't matter which direction he goes. Sometimes he's to the left, but I like him when he goes to the right a little bit better. I think he gets a little steeper in that kick. And I'm with Justin. I think next year this bull's gonna have to get a look at that World Championship contender race. 13 outs on his built for tough series career, only ridden twice. One of them, Eduardo Aparecido. He was the last one to do it all the way back in Albuquerque tie at your invitational 91 and a quarter. Well, you know, when, whenever you see these bulls like this that have that that this total disdain for somebody on their back, a lot of times that's what will help make one special. So you see the ones that understand the game, they're smart enough, they're athletic enough, big enough, strong enough athletic enough and all that stuff but when they have that extra bit of they it makes their skin crawl when somebody gets on their back when you look back through the annals of the great bulls i think that's one of the qualities that a lot of those bulls had chase outlaw for most of this season mac has been able to take advantage of bulls like that only well, well, we're going to show you one of the times he rode a great. This is Cooper Tires' brown sugar, where he was 90 and change. Yeah, great old veteran bull, and Outlaw just goes for it right there. He got every point out of brown sugar that you could get. That was Outlaw's top score of the season, and one of his 10 different round wins in 2017. You can see he's having a little trouble with the bull. The bull's antsy in there, but there has been some re-rides before because guys couldn't get out of the chute on this bull. That's something that Outlaw is aware of. The owners are aware of it. They've got to get him a little better in the chute, but Outlaw is pretty tough in here. The owners, Christine and Mike Heald, along with Chad Berger and his crew from Dakota Rodeo. 26 career outs including all the other tours. And Chase Outlaw wants to try to take advantage of this matchup. Question is, is Speed Demon going to give him the opportunity? And once again, he pulls his hand out. Yeah, and I, I don't know. He didn't like something there where it was pulled. I don't know if it moved when the bull was jumping around or what. But if Speed Demon, you heard JW say that the bull's either direction if he picks his spot and goes left tonight, I think Outlaw takes him down. Speed Demon has the upper hand, though, if he goes to the right. Shorty, have you seen anything down there that would remind you of Dirty or last night? I mean, what, how come he hasn't been put on the clock yet? No, Chase is trying to get out of the out of there. And, and one thing different between uh, Dirty or last night and Chase is Chase has kept his hand in the rope the whole time. I think Chase really wants to get out on this bull. Uh, and I'm excited about this.
this match because these two are two peas in a pod. They're wired for one pin, but plugged into 220. Hey, 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 hey. Speed Demon makes another memory and continues to work after Outlaw is off his back. Case in point, that bull just wants to play. You know, Chase really held on to the back of that chute a lot when that bull's leaving there. And it all, you know, it almost kind of, in, in my opinion, got him off to a bad start right from the get go. When you're holding on to the back of that chute as they're leaving there, you're not leaving there with that bull and getting in, getting into that counter movement and that timing right from the get go. Outlaw goes down just under four seconds. He now is 0 for 2 this week. And we move on to a guy you just heard our PBR insider Justin Felisco say that this is a must ride for Kaiki Pacheco or else he will have to dig himself out of a hole possibly too deep to get out of. Pacheco against Joe Blow. Well, this is a really exciting bull. We've seen him all season long. A lot of times he'll get his head run up over the top of the gate as it starts to open and really rare out of here. But the last couple of times he's come out clean and just flat out got after it. Up and down, around to the left. Pacheco has struggled that direction as of late. Mac, that's the motion that you and I earlier this evening were talking about that Joe Blow is known for in the shoot. Yeah, he, he's really explosive. I mean, we talk about bulls having a hair trigger. This one does. A lot of times, JW, I think they'll go ahead and unlatch the chute and keep a rope around it so he doesn't hear that noise. They will, uh, Justin. They've got the rope twisted now. They're just waiting until he gets a little closer and they'll edge that latch open real quiet so he can't hear it. It's almost like a starting gun going off for him. When that gate snaps, he knows to go before they can get it out of his way and get him clean. They will use the rope today and try to get him out of here clean. But one thing I want to say about Pacheco, watching him back here the last couple of weeks, he almost has a bit of a confusion of not knowing what's going on exactly and not knowing how to fix it. I tell you what, he's got a, a, a big mountain ahead of him to climb right here. Well, he came into this World Finals, guys, only having ridden eight of his last 27 bulls. Ty, that's less than 30%, and that is the lowest riding percentage we've seen from Pacheco in the three years he's been on tour. Yeah, and, you know, I'll tell you what, if your career is long enough, you're going to see every side of the coin, and, and, you know, that's the side of it that he's seeing. This guy, when, when he's at his best, there's nobody any better, and, and, and I still believe there's a, a World Championship in his future, but you are going to get tested and see what you're made of when you ride bulls professionally for a living, and he's getting that test now. Mac, we heard Shorty talk about in his pick of the pen, Cooper Davis facing smooth operator in, in, the, in that dynamic number one, but the ramifications, of course, for Davis facing a bull like that. Let's talk about the opposite. Let's just say Pacheco gets a re-ride because Joe Blow does not cooperate, and he goes to that re-ride pen. Pacheco will have dodged a bullet. Yeah, but I think if he gets out clean, I would love to draw this bull if I was Kaiki Pacheco and could ride that good. Well, he's on the clock now, so he's locked in. Shorty called the slap, and then Joe Blow finished the job. Pacheco now 0 for 2. And I'll go back to what Justin Felisco said during the intermission. It's been nine years since somebody has dug themselves out of an 0-2 hole to win a world championship. And Ty, it was the guy sitting in the middle of us, Justin McBride. Pacheco just nowhere near his former self, guys. Well, I, you know, I think it's a little different. I think Justin was was struggling a little bit from a case of wanting a world championship, a championship so bad in the final hour. Uh, Pacheco is, is dealing with a groin injury. He's been off of his game for a while now. You know, I was hoping that the Las Vegas Lights would help him to turn it around. So far, not the case. It's that time of the evening where we have come down to our top riders in the world. When we come back, only four pairings to go. PBR Built for Tough Series World Finals on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the new 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. By Kubota. Visit KubotaUSA.com today.
and by Cooper Tires. Count on Cooper, an American company since 1914. Here's this week's athlete profile brought to you by Cooper Tires. Cooper Davis is your 2016 PBR World Champion. After winning the world title, I, I know all the hard work and all the dedication that I've had to put into it. And uh, right now, it's it's not the time to get lazy, and uh, we have to work harder than ever to get that second one. So uh, winning the first one makes me realize that uh, I have to keep pushing and trying to do better and, and be better in, in this sport because the time that you get comfortable, it's time somebody's going to pass you. That's your Cooper Tires athlete profile, and our defending PBR world champ will be the first to ride of the final four, the top four in the world coming into round number two. We've already talked about, and Shorty specifically, about Davis's matchup against Smooth Operator. That is his Matador Turkey pick of the pen, and for reasons perhaps that do not benefit Cooper Davis. Silvano Alves is your overall bad boy mower lead dog, and he leads three men who are a perfect two for two and Jess Lockwood highlighted because amongst the top five he will get a chance to go and Mac as we got to the last four last night three of those four were not only able to ride but they really sort of matched each other took each other's best shots and it started with Davis's ride last night yeah totally different kind of bull ride here than what we've seen Davis face last night but talking about last night this was just dead easy for Cooper Davis. This is how you get up over the front of one, take it all away from him. The bull even knows it. Heck, he starts to give up at the end. Cooper Davis is unstoppable right there. Ty Mack just said it. Smooth operator is a very, very different bull. Ten of this bull's last 13 buck offs, under four seconds. Yeah, this, is, this one's going to be the other direction. We're going to see him come around really hard. We're going to see him sling his head to help gain momentum. Here's the deal for me, when, when Cooper Davis rides like Cooper Davis can ride, there's not one here that can buck him off. And I think, you know, last night should have kicked him off with the right momentum, the right confidence. He knows to get that world championship this year, he's got to go after it. He doesn't have the pressure of don't mess this up on him. He's got the, he knows he's got to go get it. Right now is the time to loosen up, step up, and go after it. J-Dub, we saw Guilherme Marchi put on quite a show at last year's World Finals of over this bowl. Well, here goes Cooper. Man, smooth operator did not make it easy for Cooper Davis. Davis with a fantastic effort. He's going to get called for a touch just under five seconds. And smooth operator just seemed to throw everything at him. Well, they, they don't get no more miserable than that. But still, the rule is you got to ride him with one hand. Got to. And I tell you what, I hate the bull, and I love Davis's effort. Did you want it? Absolutely. Did you need it? terrible. Yeah, not only guys during the Cooper Tires athlete profile did we hear from Cooper Davis, but when we met with him earlier this week, he really felt it was going to take a perfect six for six to win this world championship. And you can almost feel the frustration coming off of him right now as he paces behind the shoots after that effort, which brings up his good friend and a member of the three amigos, Jess Lockwood. And Jess Lockwood here, Mac, faces Breaking Bad. Yeah, and this is this is supposed to be a really ranked bull. I've seen that he's put up huge numbers, 47s. And here's the thing, bulls have great days with little Jess Lockwood on their back. And, and, and a lot of that is because he's a small guy. He rides really well. He doesn't ever pull him off of balance. This bull's never been ridden. You know, that... When you talk about a bull rider's attitude, if you're just going to generalize what bull riders are like, they're like the chihuahua that bows up at the, at the, at the, at the Rottweiler. You know, they're, they're little guys that think they can, and Jess is no different. He loves the fact that he's crawling down in there right now on one that's never been rode. You know, these, there's something about it. You want to do things that most men can't do, and, and that's what this sport is. And this is a, this is a perfect chance for Jess Lockwood to say the world championship race is on and I'm gonna get it. Whether you call it a big test 
a big challenge, or if Lockwood makes eight seconds, he's able to turn it into a big moment. Breaking Bad is an opportunity, Justin McBride, and to Ty's point, you both did it here in the booth and you were great at it, using a chance like this to make a statement. Yeah, it's a big chance, and here's the thing, the boy, I think he's gonna have a big jump in him to the left. When he gets going in his spin, he's gonna get to jumping in the air. I think if Lockwood gets to the spin in good shape, he's got a real chance of being over 90, winning two go rounds in a row. I wish we had a camera up in the booth. I've watched both of you sort of set your jaws as Jess Lockwood has gotten ready. That seemed like a nod. He's got Brennan Elder there. It's hard not to be a big fan of this kid right here. I think he embodies what it is to be a bull rider, and this is a, this is all the guts and going for it that you can ask for. I'll tell you what, it, it, this is a very young man to be in the position that he is, and he is handling it step by step. Ed was on the back of the chutes, his dad helping him. That's his mom, Angie. They have the whole family here cheering, and it is paying off. Let's send it to Leah. I, I'm letting him talk to Cody Lambert for the minute. Jess, before I even talk about what a great ride that was, your chute decorum is outstanding. How are you managing to handle yourself so well in there? Uh, you know, uh, McBride and Lambert, you know, and I were running riding good there. They said I'm focusing, focusing too much in the shoes, so just, I said, get him standing around and get the hell out of there, kid. <laughs> and then it's got to be good once you get to the arena. Oh, yeah, always. Let's, let's talk facts, gang. He's now the leader of the round, 89 and three quarters. If he wins and Eduardo Aparecido and Derek Kolbaba falter, Lockwood will become the new world number one after this round. But we have two rides still to go, including our world number two, Eduardo Aparecido, who last night had not only one extra bull tie, but two extra bulls because of those re-ride opportunities, eventually getting bucked off of Fire Rock. You know, and I felt like he let it play on his mind, and, and that's just my opinion from sitting here watching. You know, I felt like he did, he wasn't really wanting to take that re-ride, and he kind of just half-heartedly talked himself into it, and he didn't go at that last bull with the eye of the tiger. I think ability-wise, he should ride that bull 10 out of 10 times with the, the way he's able to ride, and you know, I don't know what made him lose that 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 gusto that he had that he has built up this year. You know, we've seen him doubt himself before, and, and that's where me and McBride have been talking. When he believes in himself the way we believe in him, that's when we're going to see him contend for a world championship. He's got to get that back right here. He lost that last night. Right here, he's got to go take it back. Mac, let's talk about the pairing. Is Freak of Nature a bull that fits him? Well, he didn't the first time they met. They met up at the major in Nashville. Freak of Nature was around to the left and just handed it to Eduardo. But when you talk about how good Eduardo is, I think he's more than capable of riding this bull. It's going to be real telling the first corner as the bull makes the first round to the left. If Eduardo is up over the front end, I think he knocks him out. I'm going to repeat Justin Felisco, our PBR insider, the stat that he gave during the intermission. The last nine world champions have not started 0 for 2 at a world finals. Jess Lockwood only has two more guys to watch. But so the ramifications tie that we talked about for Kaiki Pacheco seem to also be there for Eduardo. Yeah, Nick, you know, this is where, you know, to become a, a PBR world champion, you're going to get tested in every way. By the time you look at the long grueling season, you're going to have faced every type of bull. 
every type of situation. You know, there's pressure when you're in the lead and there's pressure when you have to catch up. Whenever it comes to moments where you have to make the ride, you can't let that, you can't let that like make you paralyze you with, with just grit and, and make you want to clamp. This is where you got to step up, loosen up, forget about it, and just go out one. And, and I think the guys, for the most part, are at their best when, they, when they're doing it that way. When you try to clamp in this sport on these ranked bulls, that's when you get slammed the hardest. Justin, go back to the year you started 0 for 3. Was it hard to flip that switch and to stay calm? Well, it was. I had a little break in between weeks. It used to be 8 head, and then I got to take a little break and kind of regroup and, and then come back and everything fell into place. You just got to keep going at it and try and ride each bull. Eduardo Aparecido, who had been number one in the world longer than any other rider in 2017. It looked as though, as you guys have talked about, he had corrected all his flaws. Cannot find a qualified ride so far this week. And he's just behind it all tied to me. Never. Never one time, you know, you think back to the good ride Cody Till made, he was up over top of everything. Eduardo was behind it from word go. And so when the bull did turn back, he's got no shot. Yep, stiff and clamped down doesn't work. Even when one's just jumping and kicking straight out across there, you can still see him struggling. A similar scenario to round number one. Jess Lockwood had ridden, and then it was Derek Kolbaba's opportunity to answer. When you walk into the locker room, the three guys you see always together, Cole Baba, Lockwood, and Cooper Davis. They have fun together in and out of the locker room. They have fun watching each other ride on the backs of bulls. Ty, Derek Kolbaba now faces Cracker Breaker. You know, I'm, I know it's a case where they're, where they're raising each other up, and, you know, we've all experienced it. I, I used to try to only watch the guys that fired me up. You know, I looked at the, every time I was peering out over that shoot, I was looking for the guys like the Troy Dunn's, like the Adriano Marias, the Justin McBride. I wanted to see guys that were gonna put out the effort and make those kind of rides that make you say, that's what I gotta do. That, and, and that's what I think we're seeing with Derek, uh, Derek and, and Jess is, you know, we've seen Jess fire one up and, and that he's gonna use that, he's gonna use that. These, these are two young guys in the prime of their career going at it at the World Finals. It doesn't get any better than that. You know, we've talked about the indicators from Pacheco, the indicators from Aparecido. I would say, Mac, the exact opposite indicators are coming off of Derek Kolbaba. Yeah, the guy is just relaxed. He looks like he's in a great place, knows he can ride anything. Got a big, strong bull here in Cracker Bay. Breaker, I went back today and watched a lot of film on him. Either I've seen the bull go either direction, but he has good timing. He's got some up and down. I think Cole Baba chews him up right here, puts number two up. Ty, the last time we saw this bull, Emilio Hacende rode him in Colorado Springs in the championship round. And with all due respect to Emilio Hacende, Derek Kolbaba is a lot better rider at the moment. Yeah, this bull, you know, he will go either direction, but the last two times he's went to the left, and that'll be around that gate. So what it means going around that gate is it's going to be a big, long blow to get to the end of that gate, and that's where the trouble can come in. If he can get around the corner, that's going to be a big part of it. That is not the cracker breaker we have seen in the past. And the flags have flown. So Derek Kolbaba is going to get another opportunity, and you can bet he will utilize it. He's watched his friend Jess Lockwood already move to the top of the round and the top of the event, and Kolbaba Ty has to keep pace. Well, I sure think so. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to sit back and want the other guys to falter. You can see this. I mean, this gets crazy when you get on one backwards right there at the end. You know, don't talk yourself out of it. Don't sit there and wonder about that re-ride. Say, hell yeah, run him in. 
you've got to have that spirit. I I'm telling you, if you're going to get a world championship, you've got to have that spirit. I don't care if you run a mountain lion in that shoot. Let's do this. Well, even though he might not be showing that on the outside, Bobaba definitely can channel it when he has to. He has accepted his re-ride. He will face high test when we come back. Jess Lockwood going to be on that hot seat a little while longer. For the second night in a row, the last few riders taking a little bit longer than we expected. During the break, Jess Lockwood and Derek Kolbaba side by side as Derek gets ready for his re-ride opportunity. And there, of course, is Cooper Davis getting his two cents as he walks through the shot. This is the high test map that has been around, it seems, for more than a few years. Been around a long time, and he has been awesome for a long time. Should be around to the right, and you watch how far this bull drifts in the spin. He's going to get all the way across the arena, Ty. I think this is a, I think this is a big opportunity for Cole Bob, and I hope he's going at it, you know, feeling that way. The race is on, and you know, the thing of it is, when you when you look at these two young guys in their prime, if you can learn to embrace where you're at and embrace the competition and, and not, that's how you deal with that pressure is when you, when you realize how lucky it is that you get to do your job in front of 16,000 cheering fans and millions all over the world watching on TV. It, it, man, it just, they're not gonna have a better moment in their life than what they're experiencing right now. We're gonna have to get out the calculators and possibly even an abacus to figure out the point totals if Cole Bob is able to ride high test and whether or not he will protect that world number one ranking. Bottom line, if Derek Cole Baba bucks off this bull, Jess Lockwood is our new world number one heading into day three tomorrow. But you can bet Lockwood is going to cheer for Cole Baba to complete his task. This is actually a pairing where there's been a mixed bag before, Mac. They've met on two separate occasions. One time in 2016, it went Cole Baba's way. The other time, high test one. Yeah, but I, I really feel like right now, obviously, he's the number one guy in the world. I feel like we're just now getting to see Ty talked about him being in their prime. I think they're just now getting to be in the best that, that they're capable of being him and Lockwood. These guys can really ride. This is a great bull into his hands. Will this be the four seconds that decides our world champion? Derek Kolbaba, with everything that had been said, seemed to have the world at his feet. Jess Lockwood, however, has done it yet again. The second night of this year's world finals, the second round win for Jess Lockwood, and he becomes your new world number one after just two days of these world finals. Well, he's been awesome. I think winning the first two go-rounds tie, you can't start off any better than that. Now, when you're talking about a game of mind control and confidence, I'll tell you what, he's just got to keep riding this high. Jess Lockwood's dad, Ed, presented him with the buckle last night. There's another opportunity for the champion this evening. He's with Leah. In 2016, Jess Lockwood was 0 for 5. In 2017, you're 2 for 2. What's changed? Oh, uh, like we've talked about all year, I've matured a lot as a bull rider and as a person, so it makes a world of difference. So you just walked, watched a couple of the other guys that you're competing against buck off. What does this do to your competitive edge? Nothing, you know, it's not over till uh, Sunday after the whole deal, six o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, you just got to keep pushing and uh, hope, I hope everyone else does good, but uh, I hope I do good as well. So when you nodded your head this last bowl, he's giving you trouble in the shoot. I asked you earlier about your composure, but just relive a little bit what's going through your body and your mind to get out there. Uh, you know, when you're at this level, you're not really thinking, you're just, uh, getting in there and letting your body and uh, mind take over and you just react. Well, I do know that you've got some family and friends here and I know that helps you a lot. So thank you very much, congratulations. Thank you. For the second evening, the Kubota Tractor Ride of the Night. 
is Jess Lockwood's winning ride tie aboard Breaking Bad. Man, you could hear him straining and grunting. This bull jerked on him right out of there. I mean, leaned him straight back. But you see him open up with that outside leg and just really get to moving and trust in what he knows as a bull rider. I'll tell you what, that's a great feeling. He's got so much adrenaline flowing through his veins right there. It's unbelievable. These are the world finals points. Remember, 300 for each round win. Jess Lockwood stays perfect, earning a whopping 600 points so far. And guess what that means? There has been a seismic shift in these world standings. Jess Lockwood, your new world number one, a mere 23 points ahead of his good friend, Derek Col Kolbaba. But most importantly, as we wrap things up, Justin McBride, he's now a full bull ahead of a lot of the guys chasing him. He's a full bull ahead, guys, but he also gets first pick mm. in the draft. Now you give him a full bull and you let him pick the one that he wants out of the pin. He's got a great chance to keep winning go arounds. The guy behind, the, all the guys behind him, the top guys, they're going to be picking way down the list. Ty, we started this show, and I started the show by asking you about Jess Lockwood. He's told us he's a new man. He certainly is. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it, there's no telling how good this kid's going to get because he's literally not far out of high school and, and he's a young kid and he's a smart kid and he, you, you want to be a fan of him this is a real talent we don't see these guys come along very often the last time i remember seeing a young guy with this kind of potential was that guy right there and and it's exciting what what it can do for the sport of uh, the, the sport of bull riding let's send it down in the dirt and get some final thoughts from shorty and jw shorty ain't no secret the bull riders we had a leapfrog but we also had a leapfrog in that world title bull race, too. Absolutely. You know, how can you take anything away from Bruiser? What a spectacular trip. Uh, speaking of bulls, my uh, pick of the pin didn't quite go the way it wanted to uh, or that I thought it would, but the same, same effects happened for Cooper Davis. Took him out of the, out of the uh, world title or didn't take him out of it, but it's going to hurt his chances in the world title race. The good thing is... He can say he was the last one to ever get on that boy at a PBR. You're right. I do like the way Jess Lockwood looks. I like his eyes. I like his focus. I think he's got it on his, on his mind, guys. Well, Mac, a moment ago, you mentioned that Jess Lockwood is going to have that first pick. He's given you credit. He's given Cody Lambert credit for helping him get to the point that he is. If you were Jess Lockwood, or if you get the chance to tell him, which bull do you think best suits him? Uh, I think any of them suit him right now. I'd go <laughs> tell him, go with whichever one you want to get on and that you think you can be the most points on because you can ride all of them right now. A guy who was a little bit frustrated after tonight's round, our defending PBR world champion, Cooper Davis. He's standing by with Leah. Well, we're having a few issues with Leah's mic. We could hear because her voice is projects so well. But Ty, while well, we've got a moment then to follow up with you, let's flip the script for a second. You're either Eduardo Aparecido or Kaiki Pacheco. How do you turn this around in the midst of such a close race? Well, you know, they both have looked clamped down. They both have looked like they're really trying not to mess it up. They're not in a position to not mess mm -hmm. it up. You know, they're now behind the eight ball. They've got to come out swinging. It's almost like they got to leave their spurn to try to get as many points as they can. So the pressure should kind of be off of them because they're not just trying to hold it together. And, and uh, they've got a lot to turn around. Cooper Davis. You know, he got on the, one of the hardest bulls there was right. to ride and just junk. And, you know, you're talking about a train with square wheels. That's got to be disappointing. But I don't think he feels like he's riding bad. I feel like, you know, I feel like he's still got some momentum and the race ain't over. You look at he's only 300 points mm -hmm. out of it. That can change in a heartbeat. Mac, talk about what JW and Shorty were mentioning, this world champion bucking bull race. Clearly, Sweet Pro's bruiser was a cut above Pearl Harbor tonight. Yeah, he, and I don't know how you compete with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bull is just spectacular, but it's not over till it's <laughs> over, man. Anything can happen. But that is what's gotten Bruiser in this position is his consistency. He never has an off day, so Pearl Harbor has got a long road in front of him. Another exciting night inside T-Mobile Arena. Let's show you how the next days should go. Tomorrow, 9.30 p.m. Eastern with our inside PBR here at the World Finals. Saturday, that pre-show shifts to 10.30 p.m. and then we all get up very early Sunday, if we even go to bed. 3.30 p.m. Eastern is when it's all gonna start where we decide everything for the 2017 season.
As mentioned, tomorrow the finals are going to continue with round three right here on CBS Sports Network with that coverage kicking off at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Once again, for Ty Murray, Justin McBride, J.W. Hart, Leah Garcia, Kate Harrison, Shorty Gorham, and our entire crew, I am Craig Hummer. We are all orbiting Jess Lockwood at the moment. Let's see if that continues tomorrow.